No, hey, that's not the right tag. Hold on. Okay, I don't have the right tag. Hi, uh, welcome back to the Knit Weekend YouTube channel. I almost don't even know where to start. It's been so long. So let's start with what's been going on. Well, this channel has been a little quiet the past couple of months um, and I've missed you so much. Sorry, I've been so silent um, on pretty much all of my social media and Ravelry channels. That's because I unfortunately had um, an ill parent that required a lot of my time and care over the summer. And um, so my brain just didn't have enough bandwidth to uh, pull this together for you. But that doesn't mean I haven't been knitting. I have been. And I'm hopeful that today will be the first of many more episodes to come uh, so that we can catch up on what I've been knitting on. Uh, so if you haven't seen me in a while or are finding this channel for the first time, my name is Haley. I am Knit Weekend on Instagram and Ravelry as well as YouTube. I am a knitter in Nashville, Tennessee, where I live with my husband and our two uh, fur babies, Buster Brown, our dog, and Sweet Georgia Brown, our cat, uh, who often make appearances in this podcast. Uh, Sweet Georgia Brown, also named as Georgie. Um, also known as, not named as, also known as Georgie, <laughs> is a is definitely a crowd favorite. Um, she probably won't make an appearance today because I've got Buster roaming around the living area with me while his dad is at a recording session. So uh, she tends to be a little scarce during those moments when he is out and about. Um, so I'm a little bit um, honestly overwhelmed to be filming this and wondering if I even know how to do this anymore. So I have made uh, some notes for myself. If you see me looking down a little bit, that is why I'm just trying to make it a pleasurable experience for you all um, and an e easier experience for me. Uh, we were out to dinner last night with uh, the band that my husband's doing a recording with today and they were just super encouraging of uh, while my house was going to be quiet, taking some time to get this podcast filmed. Um, and speaking of, I don't know if you've noticed, but the podcast has a little theme song, a little uh, guitar ditty now, and um, that is courtesy of K Kristen Castro, who is uh, who my husband is recording this album with today, so... Anyway, I guess uh, that's kind of what's been going on on the personal front, and I'm just taking advantage of this quiet time to reflect on some of the projects that I've worked on and um, share with you guys. So, don't know how long this episode is going to be, and I'm sure that I will have a beast of a time getting my editing chops back under me, so I'm probably gonna go with a lightly edited episode. If you get more ums and ahs than you have in the past, that's why. But let's uh, dive right in, okay? Um, I think I wanna start with whips today and I'll fin um, finish mm, with the finished objects. That sounds a little redundant. <laughs> I'll start with whips and then move on to the finished objects in a little bit. Um, I am full on into fall knitting. I just um, decided that despite the fact that it's 100 degrees outside here in Nashville the past couple of weeks, I can't do any more plant-based fibers. I need wool on my needles. Um, so you'll kind of, I'll show you my last uh, summer knit uh, whip that is not finished that I quit in the middle of and um, then show you what I'm currently working on. So let me grab that and I'll be right back. So my last summer whip that has yet to be finished, um, I knit this in um, the Knitting for Olive. Gotta get this focus back under my belt. Knitting for Olive Pure Silk in, no, hey, that's not the right tag. Hold on. Uh, 
Okay, I don't have the right tag. So what I was trying to say is that I've knit this in pure silk, uh, dusty artichoke. There you go, so you can see it. And um, I've held this double. The funny story about that is I was watching, when I first started this project, I was watching a podcast. I honestly can't recall which one. And I'm also behind on all my podcast viewings. I have no idea what's going on in anybody else's lives. I really need to spend some time catching up. Um, but anyway, I was watching a podcast and the podcaster said that she loved pure silk, but she could see zero reason to ever hold it double to knit something. And as I was sitting there knitting my project while holding the pure silk double, I thought, meh, okay, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Um, so this one was a little painful for me, even just getting going, honestly, um, because of the swatching. This is a all over lace tank top by Sari Nordland. It's called the Florence Tank. It is beautiful. I love the kind of vintage uh, vibes that it gives, um, but I really had a tough time meeting gauge. And it's been so long since I knit this that I can't tell you what size needle I used. I'm hopeful that I put it on my Ravelry, but no promises. I think she knitted it on 3.75 and I was on something like a four and a half or a five, um, maybe even a five and a half. Oh, I did better. I'm, I'm so good sometimes, even when I don't think that I am. I knit it on five millimeter needles. There we go. I did put it on the swatch. So anyway, um, this is my nice big swatch for, for the pattern. And um, that's the lace pattern that it makes. And it took me, I think, three or four swatches to get that right. Um, but I just kept on trying until I did. And I questioned at that time, was this pattern gonna make me miserable or was I going to enjoy it? A um, Little bit of both and I haven't finished it which at this point, I feel that it probably won't be finished until next summer. Um, just because like I said in my brain, I've completely moved on to fall knit. So the only thing that I lack on this, buttons, and to seam the uh, straps to the top of the, the garment. I'm having a hard time picking this up to show you because it's kind of in a wonky stage, but um, it's an all over lace pattern. And uh, this is one side of it. So you knit it flat and um, then knit each of the kind of straps. So let me see if I can show you how this should lay. Hopefully I can do this without knocking everything over. Okay, here we go. So it lays like this. Does that help? Can you see? Let me see if I can tilt this down a little. There you go. So you can kind of see how that would lay. And then you have to attach the straps in the back, which I have not done, nor have I gotten the buttons for the front yet either. So I'm gonna say we're at like, hmm, what maybe I'll see now I'm all wonky. That's why you don't move the camera in the middle of the podcast. Um, I'm gonna say we're at 80% completion on this, maybe even, we may be even able to call it 90%. Um, but I think the other 10% is gonna wait. So again, it's the pure silk held double. The lace pattern was pretty easy to memorize. Um, I did struggle some in figuring out how to do decreases in the lace. Um, Thankfully, due to euphoric recall, I can't recall what problem I had, but if you'll notice, kind of in my size, the lace pattern stops pretty early on. I wish it had gone a little further up into the pattern um, or up into the strap, but I just couldn't make that work. So that's why Florence Tank is yet to be finished by Sari Nordland, um, knitted apparently on five millimeter needles um, in knitting for all of pure silk, dusty artichoke held double. Um, all right, so next whip. This one is a super long-standing whip. I think I may have started this in April, possibly, possibly even March. No, Georgie, no. Uh-uh. Stop. I'll be right back. Okay, 
Sorry. She found something she wanted to play with and that was gonna make a bunch of ruckus in the living room. Uh, so my next whip, I think I started in April or May and I am finally made some good progress on it. You haven't seen it. Um, if you've watched the other episodes, you haven't seen it in quite a while because frankly, I just hadn't made any progress on it. Um, but I am back up and running on this and um, took a little time while I was on uh, our, while we were at the lake to just kind of sit down and, and focus on this project primarily. So this is my Lunai shawl, I think is how you pronounce it. It is a pattern by Natasha Hornsby, who is Moonstruck Knits. Last time you saw it, I think we were, maybe just had this top section done. I might have had one of the mosaic repeats done. Um, but since the last time you saw it, I've definitely put in um, quite a bit of work. And I am on the last mosaic repeat before the bind off. So I just have one more of these. Uh, this section. Sorry, this is the other thing about podcasting. When you don't do it for a couple months, you get out of practice. And I need to be looking at you there, not at my project, right? Eye contact is important. Um, so anyway, I have just one more of these mosaic repeats left to go um, in this pattern. And then I think something like 40 tassels that I have to make. Uh, so this yarn I'm using for this, I'm using uh, my whole Scarn Super Soft Cones um, in Ecru. It is so pretty. And then also in this light gray. Are we getting any focus on that? Oh, we're <laughs> focusing on Georgie's face. Uh, not only do I have to contend with my own, but also now hers. Um, so whole Scarn are my two primary colors. And then my contrast color is, um, oh, and those cones, if you're in the States or um, I guess North America, actually, I purchased those from Wet Coast Wools um, in British Columbia, Canada. And I think she said she does a pre-order on those a couple times a year. So if you're looking for whole scarn super soft cones, that's where you can find them. Um, and then my contrast color is this gorgeous, Isayer Deep Marine Blue Alpaca 2. You already know if you've watched the other episodes that I bought just a ton of this for my Vertices Unite shawl. Um, having not been able to decide on colors, I think I bought eight and I've just been working through them. Now, I did run out of my blue um, working on this project, so I did have to go to the yarn store yesterday um, to pick some up. Lo Luckily, my local yarn store, which is House of Yarn, um, House H-A-U-S of Yarn um, in Nashville carries it. So Meg saved me there. Um, and now I can start working on this again. So if you've not done mosaic knitting before, I love it. Um, hopefully you have given it a shot, but basically you're just knitting with one color at a time and then slipping the other uh, color strand uh, as you go. So it's it's a pretty relaxing um, technique actually, I think, and but yet entertaining all at the same time. Now I've discovered that I don't know that I'm a huge shawl, don't know if I'm a huge shawl knitter, um, because frankly, I don't mind these kind of short back and forth rows, but when we get to the rows that are really long and go all the way across the shawl and take, you know, 20, 30 minutes a row, I start to get a little impatient. Also, it's not often in my life that I can sit down and like dedicate, you know, an hour or two straight um, of knitting. And I feel like when you have a row that's 20 or 30 minutes, you really have got to have a couple hours. So what I have found though, is that the, the uh, mosaic shawl makes a great vacation knit uh, for me. This is the second year in a row that I've done a mosaic shawl while we've been at the beach in the summer um, up on Lake Michigan. And last year I did the pressed flower shawl, which I think you've seen before. And um, so this was this year's uh, shawl, just lacking that little bit there. So looking forward to picking it back up again. I'll give you all the needle specs and that sort of thing uh, when it's in a finished object, hopefully. 
the next time you see it, it will be a finished object. So we'll see. Um, but really enjoying that one and glad that I started it again. So that's two whips, um, which means that I have three is a little unusual for me because normally I'm kind of a monogamous knitter or I have one big project whip and then a couple smaller whips. But um, having ditched summer knitting and headed straight into fall, I decided to cast on this gorgeous, gorgeous yarn that my husband uh, purchased for me when he did a trip to New York earlier this year. I don't know if this yarn's gonna show up well, so I may end up having to put in some B-roll for you, but uh, he went to, to New York, um, kind of the Woodstock area of New York, and I, of course, said, oh my goodness, you have to go to uh, Perfect Blend yarn and tea shop and don't come home without copious amounts of yarn. Um, so, so I kind of sent him with some options of yarns that are local to that area that I would like to try. Um, and so he picked out this yarn of the options that I sent him. It's, it's just, it's really stunning actually. Um, so this is Jill Draper Makes Things. Is it focusing at all? There we go. Jill Draper makes things in the um, base of Kingston. This is a DK weight, 100% tardy wool. I think that's how you pronounce it, is it? Are we getting anything here? I'm just having a major focus troubles today in more ways than one. Um, so, and this is the color Elmendorf Street. Um, have not been to Kingston, New York, but I'm guessing that each of the colorways maybe are named after a street in that town. Um, so, uh-uh, don't do that. Uh, I have a dog in front of me and a cat behind me. What could possibly go wrong considering that they don't really like each other? Okay, so a little bit about this yarn. If This is going to get into the really yarn nerdy uh, part of this podcast, but this is a, uh, I believe this is a wool and spun yarn, and I'm pretty sure this is spun at Harrisville Designs, um, and so if you are at all familiar with the Shetland base or um, I think Brooklyn Shelter is actually spun there as well, then this is going to have that kind of similar firm, sturdy base feel to it. It does, it did soften up a lot in blocking, um, but it is a bit of a maybe spongier kind of feel due to the wool and spun nature. So. It looks purple, um, but if I can get it really close, maybe you can see that it's actually a blue, royal blue base with yellow and red flecks on it. So they call it a tweed. Um, it's not like a um, neppy tweed or anything like that. It's a very smooth tweed, but the yellow and red flecks on it over the blue base are what create that purple hue from far away. So maybe even like aubergine or something like that, but it's really stunning. It's one of those yarns that after you knit a couple of rows, you have to like look down and admire how beautiful it is. And um, I have to say that I think he did a great job picking this out for me. Moving into fall, my fall knits, you're going to see kind of a lot of moody um, colors. And so this fits right in with that theme. But it took me a while uh, to decide what to knit with this, and I searched pattern after pattern. I wanted something that, um, I knew I needed something that wasn't gonna have much drape, a pattern that was gonna have a bit more body to it, and I wanted something that was really going to let this gorgeous yarn shine without, um, you know, kind of too much fuss. But I didn't want something that was plain stockinette because I had just wrapped a stockinette pattern um, or project, which I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, so I spent some time searching and I came across the Gloam cardigan 
uh, by Caitlin Hunter. And I loved the earthiness, uh, the earthy vibe of the cardigan and the subtle pearl bump details. Um, and then the rest of the cardigan is pretty much stockinette, which uh, allow I thought would allow for this to shine. So I have the two front panels. It's a seamed cardigan, which I know would scare probably most people off, but I'm just gonna go for it. Um, I have the two front panels blocking right now, and but I thought I would show you the back panel. Let me just pick some fuzz off of it. Um, this is the back panel. Don't know if you're getting any focus because I can't see you, but hopefully you are. Um, and hopefully you can see that lovely pearl bump detail on it. We'll find out, I guess. Hopefully it didn't blow out too far. So, okay, so it's a gorgeous pearl bump detail on the top, very subtle, and then the bottom of the cardigan is just stockinette. I have not put on the hem yet because frankly, I just couldn't decide on, look what, when the light hits it, how gorgeous that pearl bump is gonna be. Oh man, yeah. Anyway, I couldn't decide on the length. Um, she says to knit it to seven inches after you finish the charted section, um, but I went with five and a half and I'm pretty pleased with that. Uh, so my plan is that once I get the front sections um, off the blocking mat, then I'm gonna seam the shoulders and kind of uh, see how it lines up because I think this is a pretty boxy cardigan. It's not one of her more popular patterns, so, um, but I have seen some people do it shorter cropped and some people do it longer. I think on my body type and how I plan to wear it, probably the shorter crop is gonna be the best option for me. So um, anyway, I am working on, um, on this project now. I hope to have it done. Well, no, I don't hope to have it done. I don't know, I, I know I'll have it done um, in time for October. Um, because I am planning to go to Rhinebeck, which is very exciting. Did I bury the lead there in the middle of the episode? Maybe a little bit. I'm trying not to get too overly excited just yet, um, but I am planning to go to Rhinebeck, and I just thought this would be a really special cardigan to take with me and wear, considering that that's kind of the area of the country that the, that the wool and the yarn and everything comes from that area and was purchased there to begin with. Um, so yeah, so I guess this would be my, uh, road to, what's, what's the hashtag? Road to Rhinebeck? Road trip to Rhinebeck? Road trip to Rhinebeck? I think that's it. Um, Cal entry, right? Maybe along with my shawl, I'm determined to have that finished before I go as well. Tassels and all, I'm not, I'm not skimping on the tassels there. Even though that's really tempting not to do the tassels, but it's the details that matter, right? That's what makes a project really shine. So anyway, that's my start of my Gloam cardigan. And um, so my goal for probably the next time we're together is to at least have it seamed and the sleeves done um, to be determined on if I'll have the button bend picked up or not. That will just be a surprise for later on. All right, so those are my three whips that I have currently going on. Um, and I'm gonna decide that the, that the Florence tank, now that we've talked about it, now that I've shown it to you, it's going in hibernation. So that gets wiped from the whip chart. So now two whips, my podcast, my rules, right? Yeah, okay. Um, how about on to finished objects? I have two finished objects today to share with you. I have some others, they were smaller gift knits and um, I don't know, I think I wanna keep this podcast a little bit on the shorter side for now because frankly, I'm a little bit overwhelmed by the editing and generally if I do a short podcast, the editing is a little bit easier for me um, and also because I don't, want to show off the gift knits just yet. Um, they're for some upcoming special dates, we'll say. So I'm going to hold off on the gift knits and I'm just going to talk to you about my personal, what do we, I hate that term, selfish knitting projects. 
we all say we hate it and then we use it. So my personal knitting projects. And um, I have two of them. Yes, I'm wearing one. But I'm not gonna do this one yet. Um, first, I will show you my poppy tee. Now, I don't typically get into or do a lot of uh, petite knit or my favorite things um, patterns just because they tend to use um, a lot of stockinette and, and um, a lot of yarns held double. And those are things that I can only do so much of because of just needing something to entertain me and also the cost of mohair plus whatever base yarn you're using. Also, there are so many amazing designers out there that um, I feel like you know those. And so I try to choose something that's just maybe a little more off the beaten path. But that being said, um, I am so lucky to have two knitters in my neighborhood, uh, Kat and Victoria, and we decided we were going to do a little knit along for August. And um, we all wanted to knit the petite knit poppy tee. Um, and in our area, it's going to be a transitional wardrobe item for fall um, because we just don't wear mohair and wool in the summer here. Um, but we all decided to knit the poppy tee in knitting for olive, merino, and soft silk mohair held together. Chose different colors. Um, I went with the clover green and um, this color was very fun. Uh, a lot of good memories because my husband actually chose this color when we were in uh, Copenhagen back in April. So um, I went with the clover green and I think um, Victoria did dusty violet and Kat did deep petroleum blue. So we had a pretty good gamut of all the colors there. And we met over cocktails to cast on, um, which maybe wasn't the best idea because we started to lose light and we all had to rip out our cast on and start over. Um, but you know, it was fun and we did get it done. Uh, and I think at each of us, it took about three weeks to knit the project. So not so bad. Um, confession time though, mine still has not been blocked um, because I finished it pretty much my first day on vacation at the lake. And um, the thing about being in the upper peninsula of Michigan is that it gets kind of cool in the evenings and our high temperatures during the day were only in the low 70s. So this actually got put into rotation on my vo vacation wardrobe pretty quickly. Um, I tried to take some photos on the beach. I think they're kind of lame, but maybe I will put them in here with you anyways so that you can see just what a giant nerd I really am. Um, but anyway, so a few details on this tee. Um, oh, I worked on, I think the pattern calls for 3.5 millimeter needles and I worked this on 3.75 millimeter needles. So just a little bit larger. So it is a small needle, smaller needle size, um, but it actually went pretty quickly due to the construction, I think. Um, it is only slightly raglan, but for the most part, the shoulders, have a really unique pickup construction. It's the same that I used on my Moulinet cardigan that I think I told you about in episode one or episode two. One of those two, I was working on it. Um, and I love this shoulder construction. It's one of my favorite shoulder constructions. It looks so tailored. Look at the line on that. Isn't that just gorgeous here? So pretty. Um, and then it kind of has a little bit of a squaring effect when you wear it on the front um, as well. And then the other detail that I really love about this one is the pearl bump detail along the neckline. Can you, sorry, I'm getting shadow on my face. It's kind of a weird time of day and I'm between two windows, but um, this gorgeous pearl bump detail is on all of the uh, focus, yeah, on the cuff of the sleeve and along the neck and also on the hem here as well. Um, so those are my favorite details about the poppy tee and it's also just such a great memory. I, If you have any knitters in your area, pick something that you all want to knit, do it together. It really makes the project so much more fun and you cheer each other on and stay motivated to carry on. Um, so we're all now done with our tees and um, Victoria is 512 knits on Instagram 
and Kat is the Thriving 20s, and I think they have both posted theirs. Um, I know Victoria posted hers recently. Not sure about Kat yet, but anyway, you can see their versions there. I mean, it was just such a fun experience. So, the last finished object, or my second finished object that I'm gonna share with you is um, my ranunculus. And I had high hopes to put out a really great podcast for you all about my mods that I made on this. And that was two and a half months ago. So if you think I remember everything that I did on this project from two and a half months ago, you don't know me very well. Um, so we're just gonna hit the highlights. Luckily, I did at the time make some notes um, about the mods that I did. So hopefully I, <laughs> I can um, interpret those correctly and get those, get those uh, communicated well and clearly to you. Um, you know, this is one of those patterns that I said I would not knit, and then I decided to um, because I had seen Bethany from Well Love Knits, um, her white version, and I just fell in love with it. So I did decide to cast it on. I used a yarn that has now been, I think, discontinued. It's called Papyrus by Fibra Natura. Are you getting any focus on that? This is a cotton, 78% cotton, goodness, 78% cotton and 22% silk yarn. Um, and it just, I'm not a huge cotton person, as I've said a, a hundred times before, but this cotton is very kind of lightly wound and has a bit of kind of loft to it that you don't normally see in a cotton yarn. Um, so, I will just go ahead and tell you that this tee has been in high rotation. I have worn it at least once a week since I finished it, if not more. I absolutely love it. And I can see why it is such a popular pattern. I mean, it's adaptable to pretty much any yarn and any season, uh, which is very cool. And I really didn't use that much yarn. I believe I used five um, five fifty gram skeins. Yeah, so really not that much yarn. Um, and then I think the other thing that's pretty neat about it is that all the sizes start with the same yoke. Um, and then you just kind of carry on based on your size after that. So I started this. I don't know what that means. All right, okay. Well, I started this as an experiment in um, knitting at a very different gauge than what was called for, because I believe the pattern calls for a 14 stitch gauge. I actually knit this at an 18 and a half stitch gauge. Um, I don't have my row gauge written down, but that was also a very different number. Um, and so what I did for this was I did use a spaced long tail cast on, because I was knitting this in a cotton that I knew would stretch, I didn't want to use the stretchy cast on, um, but the regular cast on was going to be too small to get over my head due to the gauge size. So I used a long tail space cast on and I cast on um, 66 stitches instead of 60 stitches. And then I just adjusted my increases after that. I think my yarn guy is here, so. We'll have to see how this goes. Um, <laughs> I didn't make any adjustments to the to the yoke, other than the fact that I messed this up. <laughs> um, yeah, I think what happened here is that I purled in the middle row between the two purl slip rows, and so that created this kind of bigger garland effect and. Um, I just kind of decided to roll with it. I thought it looked fine and I didn't think that it was anything that anybody would notice who had not knitted a ranunculus uh, previously. So um, the other thing that I will add about this pattern is that it's one of those that people say is so simple, but for me it actually wasn't like, I mean it was easy, but it did take some brain power in this section because 
my eyelids kept on getting off every time that I did a new row. So this one took a couple of frogs to get my eyelet sections to line up properly. So while it's not a difficult pattern, it's definitely something that in this section at least, you do need to make sure that you are on point. Um, so once I finished the yoke, I then referred to my gauge and figure out what size I was going to knit. Um, and I adjusted, you know, the, I chose my size based on my width. In desired end width. Sorry, I had to think through how I was going to say that. I decided to go with, oh, sorry. Um, I decided to go with six inches of positive ease on this project um, because it's the summer and it's hot and nobody wants to wear clingy clothing in the summer. Uh, so I'm going to put in a little B roll here so that you can see what six inches of positive ease looks like um, for me. I am really pleased with how this turned out as far as the kind of breezy uh, vibe of the t-shirt. One modification in addition to choosing my width um, based on my gauge difference is that I actually also adjusted the number of the raglan stitches to give myself some more room in the armhole as well. One of the things that you may notice from if you see people who knit at a smaller gauge but don't adjust the raglan um, increases is that you'll notice the armhole kind of sits right up in their armpit. Um, again, it's the South. We, we sweat in the summer, we just do. So for me, having a t-shirt up in my armpit is not going to be very comfortable for the summer. Uh, so I like something a bit more loose. So what I did is I calculated the length that the raglan section should be for my size that I was knitting and then um, adjusted based on my row length. So I think that added something like six or eight rows um, to my raglan increases. Uh, and I think I actually put those notes on Ravelry. I don't know, did I do that? I might have just lied. I don't know. Um, so that just allowed for a little bit more room in the armhole length there, which I really liked. Um, my other modification is my are my sleeves. And what I did for these, uh, this, uh, this pattern offers like a kind of uh, choose your own sleeve adventure uh, of sorts. And so for the short sleeve, it actually has you bind off pretty much straight away. Um, but I decided to go with the long sleeve option and then I ended up doing the kind of slanted um, or angled long sleeve option to use some short rows to build in some more length for the sleeves so that they would be more even across as opposed to kind of sit like this. Now they sit like this, which I prefer. And then I went back to the short sleeve option and did the bind off um, that the short sleeve option called for was really kind of um, torn on the bind off because I don't particularly like, uh, most people do the um, twisted rib bind off on the sleeves, but I don't particularly like this yarn in the, or the twisted rib in this yarn. It's just, I mean, it's fine for the neck, um, but I didn't really like it very much on the sleeves. So then I thought, um, well, maybe I would do a folded hem section on the sleeves and, um, I don't know, that just seemed like also not the right decision with a short with a sleeve this short. So I went with the suggested bind off for the short sleeves and the pattern. I am pretty pleased with it. I think one of them found off a little looser than the other. Um, and if I were really upset about it, I would go back in and fix that, but I'm probably not going to, just being honest. Uh, because I've worn it so much and I've loved it, so why mess with it now? Um, and then my other modification was I did just go in for a folded hem. Um, since I was going for a t-shirt vibe on this, um, yeah, I just did a folded stockinette hem with a pearl ridge fold um, and then tacked it down as I went with live stitches. So um, hopefully I include, remember to include some B-roll here so that you can see 
what that hem looks like as well. Yeah, okay, hopefully I did that. So um, that is, oh, I also had my first kind of attempt at waist shaping for this, which I didn't maybe execute the best. Um, I placed my waist shaping in the wrong place. It was very subtle waist shaping, so it's not a big deal. I think it still looks nice. I'm not gonna go back and fix it. But one of the things that I see a lot when you, or I have experienced is when you knit a circular yoke, you kind of sometimes get a flare out um, of the body. And I, and I didn't want that for this project. I kind of wanted to pull it in a little bit. So I did put some, um, some decreases in the front of the project. I spaced them though a little too close to the edge of the body and I should have spaced them a bit closer in um, under my bust. So it does have a little bit of a, a droop in the front of the shirt. It's not very noticeable. I don't think anybody notices it except me. So I'm just gonna leave it there. But, um, but if you're interested in trying that, I think that that's a really nice addition to this pattern is to add in some waist shaping. Um, some decreases and then I actually did go back and then also do the increases as I got closer to my hips so that I built that um, width back in there. Um, so yeah, so when my ranunculus, it's done. Do I think I'll knit another version? I don't know. I don't know that I'm one of those um, ranunculus knitters who's just gonna turbocharge them out. Um, but I do really like this and um, maybe there would be a winter version, but you know, I'm pretty satisfied with my summer version for now. So I think that catches us up on all of the projects and um, whips that I have going on. And I hope that I haven't kind of rambled on too quickly. Um, it's a little nerve wracking to be back here in front of the camera again and get my feet back under me. You guys have been so sweet. A few of you have reached out to say, where did you go and are you okay? And, um, and anyway, I'm just glad to be back here and spending some time with you. I feel re-energized after our trip. Maybe I'll include um, some B-roll here of uh, our lake or at the end of our lake trip because um, it's a special place and I enjoy sharing it with everybody and it's one of the places that I really get to focus on knitting, reading, and just kind of slowing down for a little bit. So after that trip I'm feeling a lot better and um, hopefully I will see you again in just a few weeks. Um, we'll talk then. Bye.